Hello, my name is Carol May Whittick. Welcome to Her Conversations Tools for the Awakening. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. What is the awakening? This is the moment in time when humanity rises up out of the darkness. Who is awakening? Each one of us present on earth today, reclaiming our sovereignty, seeking greater possibilities in our reality and looking for solutions. We know being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If we can transform ourselves, we can change the world. Guests on Her Conversations will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. Listen to their stories, hear how they are in service to the world. Let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's episode is Carla Noemi Gonzalez Novoa. She's the host and producer of Travel to Grow podcast. The podcast is bilingual in English and Spanish, and on it she has inspiring interviews about the inner journey that we make when we travel with a perspective on personal growth and passion for travel. During our conversation, we talk about how the past two and a half years have changed her personally and professionally, the repercussions of speaking her truth, and also the responsibility that she feels as a podcaster, especially now that people are losing faith in the mainstream media. So as always, I begin by asking my guests, her is an acronym for higher energetic resonance, When do you feel your most her? I feel her when I can breathe slowly, when I can feel my body, when I'm conscious how my body's feeling right now. Like I can feel the air, the wind, I can feel the light, I can feel my stomach, my heart rate. I can take my time to to understand what I'm thinking and I'm not rushing. I'm not in autopilot. It's also when I feel like this love embracing me, supporting me, caring for me from my heart. And I feel warm. (laughs) Perfect. A beautiful response. Thank you. Um, So before we go on, can you just share a little bit about who you you are, Carla, how you, you know, as much as you feel comfortable in sharing, just talk about what brought you to this point where you've got the podcast and what inspired you to start it. And maybe there are things that happened in your life that inspired you to actually go for it as well, because also you probably as a podcaster will meet many people who always want to say, Oh, I want to start a podcast. I want to do this. I want to do that, but they never actually get it done. So what is it as well when you're talking about that, that inspires you to keep going? Cause there's a lot of work. We both know. Well, uh, since I was a little girl, I always liked traveling and getting to know other cultures and talking to people from other places on earth and getting to know what it's like for them, life. Like, how is their day? How's their way of thinking? How, uh, what are their passions? And what makes them happy? What makes them want to wake up every day and be alive and be a creator in this world. So uh, since I was very little, I always kept uh, friends from all over the world. And we started writing like mail letters, like before internet (laughs) was a thing. We started with letters and postcards and we said like, small uh, information about our lives and we exchanged that and after when internet came around well the email was my thing and we started writing emails and getting in touch and then um well I started um well I always liked languages I studied English I'm from Mexico so I started studied English and then French 
And I was called to study international relations as a bachelor and then a master's in education. And that led me to go abroad and study a semester in France, in the south of France, which was an absolutely dream. It was amazing to be near um, all those, like, the South, it's, uh, I'm out of words right now to describe it, but it's, it's, it, it was a dream to study there and live there. And then I came back years later to have a job as a um, language professor and Mexican culture professor, and I enjoyed it so much. Um, when I came back, I, I continued my professional career um, in higher education mainly in academic positions and focus on international educational cooperation. So I used to help students go study abroad with their visas and coaching a little bit about um, losing the, the, the fear of the unknown and just jumping into new paradigms and new adventures and I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. After that, um, I, I, I created um, my own um, consulting agency for international relations and in, um, mobility. And three years ago, it's when I decided it was time to be <clears throat> in another platform and that was creating my podcast like i've been a fan of podcasts so so many years i think since i've known they existed i i i love them i love how they communicate they express in a very intimate way it's very different than any other media and um so as a fan I started learning so much from them. I started um, picking the subjects that really interested me. And as a self learner for my whole life, like I'm really devoted in keep learning. That was the perfect way. It was free. It was accessible. It was on my phone or in my computer. So it was really easy just to keep learning and to follow people that I, I admire and that I could learn something that could build something good for my life. So when, uh, it was in October uh, 2019 when I, when I created and started uh, producing and hosting Travel to Grow podcast. And until now, it's been such a lovely ride. Like this podcast for me means the world. Like it's my biggest creative outlet right now. It's where I have a very specific vision on how I want it, how, how I wanted to create it, what I want to display, but very importantly, what kind of energy I want to put out with my art. And I see it as that. I see it as is part of my um, creation uh, of my artistic expression because communication has been like a huge thing for me since forever. I could have studied communication, but I, I thought like, uh, I think that that just comes natural to me. Like I'll just go study international relations because I want to be better in what content I talk about and, and what I understand more about the world. Mm -hmm. But now I, I'm sure that um, communication is part of my uh, my uh, ADN. How do you say that? I'm my ADN um, in Spanish um, because. It, it comes really natural. And the vision that I have with my podcast is to have conversations about the inner journey that we make when we travel. Mm -hmm. What happened inside of you? What transformations each person has 
because of uh, how they prepare to go, how they were in their life before they go, and how being outside, traveling, getting other people, uh, getting to know other people, um, studying or working or being in other environment, environments, how that transformed you, like what you get out of it, what do you learn, what what are what is your vision now of the world? Because we cannot love what we cannot know or we don't know. And for me, it's very important that uh, to promote that, to promote that people get out of their comfort zone and they get out of their city and they get to know other kind of realities. Like sometimes I feel like it's so magical how we get into a plane and it can take us somewhere so different in culturally, socially, um, how the relationships um, develop in other cultures, in other places. And also just the power to admire the landscape, like actually see nature in other representations. Like the earth is so vast, is so diverse, is so rich, is so beautiful. Like, why are we not traveling all the time to, to everywhere? Like, it, it doesn't have to be far away. Like, very close to your house, you can make a trip and you can see a natural spot where you can admire and just feel in all that energy from Mother Earth and feel how history has its way through architecture to display how humanity have seen and have lived uh, their lives. And everything feels like so wonderful to me. Like <laughs> I'm always in, in this admiration of how much can I see? How much can I learn? How much can I perceive with my eyes, with my senses? And when, when sometimes I cannot travel for myself, my podcast is just the perfect, amazing way to have like these ambassadors that travel are, and come from all over the world and travel and tell me what they saw. And even with their perspective, I learned so much. I want to respond to what you've said about, especially when it comes to travel. I've not traveled as much as I would like to. I have traveled quite a bit, but in comparison to other people I know, I've just, I've not gone anywhere really. And I haven't gone anywhere for the past three years. The last time I went away was like a work trip. I did like a work trip in Germany and France. And it was it was work. So we didn't even see where we, we you know how it is. You go to the airport, you go to the thing, you might go to the shop. You can see that things are different in the stores. But even even if you do it, um, even if you do like a quick trip like that, and you, you're not able to do like the kind of big tourists go to the museum and take pictures of the sites, even just doing normal things in different places, just, you know, it gets your brain working. And, and what I really like about travel when I've done longer trips is that what you've spoken about of how it just brings, for me, it brings out a completely different part of myself that wouldn't be challenged or activated at home. One, because when I'm in the UK, whether I'm in um, cities that I know, or even if I venture out into a new city, it's pretty much all the same. The high street shops are all the same. You know, even if someone are doing independent kind of shops, they're all the same version of independent. Then they're, they're not really that different. You know, I can walk into a shop and if I pick up like a a, a, a bag of um, I don't know a, <laughs> a bag of food, something like that. Even if it's not, you know, even if I can I can see, I can read it, I can kind of understand what what's in there. You know, even if it's something I don't know. Whereas if I'm in a completely different country, I have to really, if I don't know the language, and this is like, especially when I was out in Bali and in India, I just, and I can't really tell what it is. And there's no, you know, you really have to kind of activate your head to try and get where you are. But you also find that even if you don't speak the language, you can speak the language, you can get by. There's a way of communicating that people communicate with each other that is not even about the language. It's like so subconscious and it's so 
um, energetic that you can kind of make signs and smiles and, you know, kind of like actions and everything like, and people, people will understand you. And if, and, you know, if you can at least find one or two phrases to speak in a different uh, language, then that's respected. Even if you, to them, sound crazy, they can see that you're trying, you know, and it's always, always a form of respect, I think, to have some sort of level of, I'm going to try and communicate how you all communicate here instead of, you know, there's a real arrogance in particular with English as a language, as a first language that everyone should know <laughs> how to speak English when you go. And another thing about travel that has one, I've always had that curiosity to go away and travel and and know the world like I know my town. You know, there's that just I know if I go back to Bali, I know loads of different streets and corners like I know areas where I live in London and around here now. So and having and also when I meet people that I never that went there that haven't I didn't meet them at the same time, but I've got to know them years later and they're in the same place. We can talk about this faraway place that we weren't at the same time, but we know the same shop. We went to the same restaurants. You know, we're like everyone kind of goes there in their mind. And it's and and this is something that I can never really. Um, it's always curious to me that people are scared of travel, you know, like not really understanding what it can do do for you. Um, and even, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking to someone because I was saying to them, you know what, I, I really fancy the idea of living in a different country. I really feel like a, a call to move somewhere and I don't 100 percent know where it is. So this is all going on trust and feeling and preparing and visualizing and trying to work out what it is, because, you know, and we can talk about this later. The world is changing so much that we want to feel that we're more around um, environments and, and structures and societies and communities that actually align to who we are and what we want to create. And um, the people that are speaking my language on that are just not here. <laughs> or, you know, they might be here, but I've just like the, the ones that I align to are not here. And um, I was just having a conversation with someone who was a quite an acquaintance. I wouldn't really call them a friend, an acquaintance of mine. And they were saying, well, who are you going to go with? I'm like, I don't know. You know, I might end up, I'd probably end up going on my own. I'm like, open for that. You know, I'll go to somewhere on my own. And they were horrified, literally just like, oh my God, like I could never do that. And it's like, one, I wasn't asking you what you could do, <laughs> you know? So don't start having anxiety for yourself about what I want to do. But I'm like, why do you want to, like for me to spend your entire life in one spot, you never know, you just never know the dimensions of who you are. And when you travel, like you say, when you travel, it just brings out a different part of you that you can't, you never really activate if you just stay in a familiar place where everyone acts the same. And you go somewhere else, people see a different side of you. It pulls out a different side of you and it makes you become a different and broader person. And also you have a greater knowledge of the tapestry of the world and how many different people and cultures and ways of living they are that even if you're only going away for like a week or two weeks you bring a little bit back of that home but if you stay in the same place all the time you just have no concept of life in itself you know and, and you'll find that very mundane things become very big and very important when in the scheme of things you there's so much you could be filling yourself with so I'm I'm all one for travel <laughs> you know there's so many millions of places that I would like to go but definitely I understand when you're talking about the external journey but also what it does for you on an on an inner on an inner level as well and I've um I always used to say like if I had children what I would do is once they finish school I would buy them a ticket and send them to travel for, for a year. I'd just like go before you just stay in education all the time, go somewhere, do something kind of like put a little bit more on you before you decide that you're going to do this all the time. I, I just think it's so useful for people to do. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. And um, I think that life is the experiences that we have and that's what our soul takes away what we learn what what we lived what happened in our lives and how we handle it and 
what you said about the trust and intuition is basic. When you are going to go study abroad or live abroad or even have a vacation, like you have the whole map to choose from, but yeah. it's your trust and it's your intuition that is going to tell you where the best experience could be for you. And I don't think it's a uh, casualty that I choose France, for example, like it had something really deep within my soul to be called to the language, to be called to the culture. And I, it absolutely, it was a delight. Like every day I was so, so pleased, so happy, so excited to be working with French kids. And then I realized there are a lot of um, African original uh, kids that now live in France and they were my students and I had so much to learn from them and it was so much fun it was so different from what I was used to working in Mexico and I enjoyed it so much also what you said about traveling help us be more free to renovate ourselves when you go and have a, a new relationship with somebody, you get to know somebody, they are not expecting anything from you. Like they have their canvas blank. Mm -hmm. So you can act as whatever you want in that moment. And when you are with your family or with your group of friends from high school or uh, your cousins, etc., they know you and they expect something from you. And if you go out about talking about other things or having interest in other things or just acting different is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like don't break the image that we had about you. <laughs> and when you're abroad, it's like, whoo, you're, you're really free to be totally. whoever you want in that moment. And that actually gives you more exploration on yourself mm. and to get to know you better and to refresh who you are, what you want, what um what you enjoy doing in life and that's so important like we change all the time and we do, we don't notice that we have this ability to change and to choose again and to uh, have some evolution and traveling help us with that because we are never the same person that left home and I love that <laughs> yeah you can't be but I think that's that's part of what um causes a lot of anxiety to people because they are very safe in their where they where they're at then and they may not even be 100 happy and or they may not know what what level of happiness there is to get because they're just there they're just doing the, everything and um you know, when I've traveled before and I've gone away for a long time and people have said to me, oh, well, you know, I could never do that because I've, you know, I've got this and that. And suddenly all of these things, things are stopping you. Or the worst one is when people blame ch having children. They're like, I can't go anywhere. I, I, you know, I've got my kids. I can't do anything. One of my little favorite pastimes now, my, is just finding you like there are a lot of youtubers that from all over the world that are living completely different lives some of them are starting homes off grid some of them just travel and sail around the world on a boat and they they're having babies you know so you choose what what you want to make it don't blame the children for you not stepping forward if anything the fact that you have children should be impetus for, for you to make sure that you keep stepping forward and keep evolving yourself so it kind of inspires them I would think and of course it's very easy for me to say that not being a parent because all the people that are parents are going to go well you you don't know what it's like to have children but people make it work I've seen people make it work I've had close friends who make it work who are not you know overly abundantly rich but they make it work. They travel and they take their children with them. And you don't have to be staying in five star hotels. I think one of the um, misconceptions about travel is that it's expensive. But if you if you budget your long term travel like you budget a two week holiday, then yes, it's expensive. But if you look for air, you know ways where's that ways that you can stay, if it's possible for you to make an income while you're while you're away, when you do that. There's all of those possibilities for you to do. It's um, 
it's <laughs> there's there's no excuses and especially now as well when it seems like the world is starting to maybe open up a little bit more you know i don't know how how did you find the the past two and a half years in terms of traveling in terms of how did you also kind of switch your podcast and what did you feel in terms of any kind of responsibility for the message that you were putting out wow this is a very interesting question carol <laughs> because it changed a lot mm. like these last years oh my god oh my god <laughs> like really uh first of all um well i have two kids i have two kids so the immediate change is that i had to homeschool them um with the virtual school and and it was hard like kids were not used to having um their teachers on on the screen my kids didn't know how to use a computer exactly like very well by themselves so i had to be very present and and point out how to use the technical things about a computer but then the learning process changed a lot so it was harder to be engaged in the classes and somehow there were more distractions in the house like you have they have their toys they have they are hungry all the time you have to do like 10 snacks <laughs> and and uh, and then there is the other kid that probably is singing a song for 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 preschool and then the older kid is like mom she's making so much noise and <laughs> all of that like had to be managed inside of my house by myself and on plus of that being taking care of the house and work and more things so it was hard but i think at the end like we conquered it, it was it, like we learned from that experience but in the professional part like i decided to close my um consulting agency mm. there was a very strong uh opposition of mine on recommending any student that for them to be able to travel and to go to their dream of studying abroad they had to use the you know what mm. in their arm and i was totally against it like i could not tell a kid or a student that pursuing an education abroad was more important than, the, than their lives or their health or their abilities, mental, physical abilities. So I decided that it was not anymore my time to be pursuing that and I and I closed it. Like I even after I closed it, clients contact me like, Carla, can you help me? I want to go to Canada or I want to go to Europe to study. Can you help me with my uh, visa uh, immigration uh, procedures? And I'm like, I can send you to some friends, but um, like, I would not like to, to engage in that, you know? It, it has to be like, I felt like very strong it was not ethical for me to know what I know and do it for the money. Right, right, right. And and it just it just was was an easy decision because I was very clear. I'm not gonna do it. That's it. So I closed it. And in regards of my podcast, of course, that did continue. And at the beginning, I was really skeptical like what is going on like you watch the news you watch the fear mongering and something is off like right off the starting point even before because they were like some weird things going on that just are like hmm something is cooking and this doesn't seem like 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 the media is being clear to us and it doesn't seem, yeah, like something was really, really off. So some months um, after, it was clearer and clearer. When I started 
like following certain people on social media and going back to some of the commentaries and some specialists were starting to talk about some dangers or some things that it actually involved politics. It, it evolved um, corruption, like in big proportions. And I, even if I knew before, yes, it has always been some corruption in the world. Like I knew that since forever. But the deep of the rabbit holes I went through mm. in 2020, it made me sick. Like I actually was sick in my stomach. I wanted to throw up. I was disgusted about what was happening in the world. Like I could not believe there was this kind of evil, like this so big, like so globally. And for days, I I could say that I, I was really sad. I It was sad to wake up to that, to, to realize so many things that we've been lied to, so many things that are not for the population's uh, benefit and just for very few. And and it just, just everything came like crumbling, like 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 a domino effect. Like one thing led to the another and another and another in health, in politics, in uh, economic system, in educational system. Um, Plus. In 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 everything in pharmaceuticals, see yes. So it was a big shock. In a way, even though when I was little, I read books that told me something like this was going to happen, but I didn't know it was this. You know, after I I, I just realized it afterwards, and and it was hard. Like I had some days that that I, I could cry just to, to see what, what was going on and how the world was embracing a situation that was not good and, and how it was in detriment of their health and their lives and their liberty and their freedom. And that, like, it really touched me so deeply, so, so deeply that I felt I cannot be silenced. Like, this is crazy. We are in an inverted world. Like, the things we should be doing for our health are the ones that are forbidden or illegal. And the things that are promoted are the ones that are killing people and hurting people. And it made me so much of a, a critical thinker these past years. Like I really started like questioning everything, everything from news to behaviors, human behaviors, to to my own thoughts. Like, like everything, like why do I think the way I think? Is it serving me? Is it enlightening me? Is it making me feel more in unity with God or universe or the, the spirit, the divine? Why do I think like that? Like where did it come from? And what interest has the people that uh, projected that or taught me that? Mm -hmm. And for my podcast, I thought, of starting talking a little bit, but when I saw the censorship, it was so big, so big that I actually had to be a little bit careful about it. And uh, I, I had a lot of censorship on social media, um, especially on Facebook or Instagram, where I had my 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 accounts, and I started seeing the engagement go down like zero people, zero. Nobody was watching anything. And and people were asking me like, Carla, I cannot tag you. Like it said that you violated community, uh, how you say? Um, guidelines. guidelines. And it says um, 
like I have to type your whole name, but before you appear like in my first contacts, and then I have to type your whole name to have you come out and, and find your account and, and things like that. Just weird things that I realize from hearing other um, colleagues that are talking and being outspoken about what's happening in the world. I realized like I was in the, la in the list. I was in the, in the blacklist of, um, of the censorship and it kind of, a part of me was proud of it. Like, I feel like this is what we all should be doing. Like, like I feel called to, to say when lies are being portrayed to the, to mankind, like, this is not okay. It's not okay to, to deceive. It's not okay to profit this way from people. And I know probably from my following, like my exposure is very, very little, but still I feel like somehow it has to spread somehow with the purpose that it has and I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. And in the podcast, I just started having amazing like-minded people. Like the way that I feel the connection with um, my recent uh, guest is unbelievable because I started being more authentic and I started speaking my truth and I started not caring about if somebody liked me, if somebody unfollowed me, if, um, if my truth irritate some, like that's not of my problem. My way that I choose to show up in the world, it's a person that sees something and call it out. Mm. Like if you feel that the truth is this way, like I don't have, like I, you can say like, oh, but you're not so sure. Yes, but this resonates with me right now. If I'm presented with newer information, newer studies, okay. I'm open to watch them. I'm open to evaluate them. But for right now, this is this is the way I feel the truth is heading and I'm going that way. <laughs> and and I think that's <laughs> what um what many people are afraid of is they are afraid of being wrong, whatever wrong is. And then also afraid of stepping out or sticking out, you know, and it's just and also it's lazy <laughs> and ultimately they're, you know, let's call it what it is, lazy thinking, because if you have over, especially over the past two years, been researching and reading and trying to learn what's right and what's wrong, like you say, you have to think and you have to think over and over and over again. And one of the things that we have to learn to do um, because education, I'm just going to assume education worldwide has never prepared people, like you say, to critically think. So the way that we learn and we take on information and the way that we've all been trained to do so is someone, let's just use media, for example, someone comes on and they're wearing a nice dress or a nice tie and their hair is nice and the studio is bright and there's lights and there's music and they tell us something and everyone goes, okay you know <laughs> and then you you know you turn it off and as far as you're concerned someone has just given you some truth and then you take it on board you take it into your consciousness you have conversations about it you agree or you disagree with it you align with it you you fight over it you make decisions in terms of you vote on it you buy something as a result of what the media has told us and what has been really difficult for I know people, some people really struggle with this because I was trying to have a, I, you know, I was trying to put a point across to someone yesterday and it wasn't to get them to agree with me because it's like, ultimately, it's not even my truth. It's like, it's something that is happening. So you're not agreeing with me. I'm just trying to show you a version of events is to say, well, we have to, one of the things that we really have to do right now is we have to be careful of, of just assuming that because it is on TV, that it's true. And that's whether that's news, whether that's um, documentaries, 
or whether that's entertainment in its various forms, because they're all leading us into various different ideologies and mindsets. And in particular, especially where the where the, the hardest part, I think, for people to really get their um, minds around is when you're watching entertainers, actors. Actors, every time an actor goes on a screen, whether they're on a film or not on a film, they are acting 100%, 100%. You're not, if they're giving you a behind the scenes, in home, chilling, they're acting. They're acting 100% all the time, you know? And this is <laughs> something I was trying to say to someone. I'm like, like, and I was guilty of it before because I was, you know, really into music and I was chasing the, the musical career and all of these kind of things. And I believed a lot of the time when someone presented me with, their backstory. This is my rags to riches story. This is what I did to get to here and everything like that, that that was true. And then when I saw them behind the scenes or when I saw them just walking down the road, like drinking a coffee, that it was all just, you know, candid and natural, but it's not like that at all. The reality that we live in or the, or the, um, the information that we use to shape our reality, shall I say, is being presented to us in a certain way on purpose. And even, and, and the same as well is when you come away from the mainstream. And I saw that particularly when people lost a lot of faith in mainstream and then started to look to alternative, there were very similar characters there. So we didn't, it still took a while for people to understand discernment, even when they were looking in the alternative um, arena and there are a lot of people that took advantage of people still having lazy minds and a lack of ability to uh, critically think because they took all their adoration from mainstream news and mainstream celebrities and just put it onto alternative celebrities and influencers and giving those people all of your belief and attention and in some instances money you know and and you have to then start to really inform yourself on so many different levels so that when somebody says something to you you're not just going to go oh yeah okay you ask a second you're asking a question in your mind you you can take it on board and go okay cool i think about that but then ask just you know in your mind go well is that possible for that to happen if you know what if this happened and that happened just question it on a in your mind and as like if something is a lie it really doesn't take that much for it to fall down it, it re you just very basic questions, very logical questions will make a lie fall down. If it's the truth, you can throw questions at it all day and it will never, ever change. To ask you this as well, how did you feel your response, what responsibility that you had as somebody that was then being a voice that people would listen to and take in from uh, inspiration or direction for? What did you... Did you feel that you made a shift in what you were doing in your podcast or what you were speaking about? Or do you feel like you had to, like, you you know, I'm just going to go for it and I'm going to tell everyone what I think? I mean, because that's kind of the way that I went. Well, I I went um, carefully. I think I, I gave it some time and some thought on the kind of um, guest and subjects I was going to touch on the podcast. Um, but in a way, I also wanted to, to discuss what is going on and what we are observing and why it is important that we take um, acknowledge of uh, the deceit and the lies and um the intention behind everything that is happening mm -hmm. that's something really really important for me and i i value so much that humans conserve curiosity it is a natural value of being a human and our society has made us like feel so much like oh, everything is given to you in the mouth, you know, like, like, don't think about it, don't process the minimal effort, just do that, like, it doesn't matter, don't ask where your food is coming, <laughs> don't ask uh, where your experts 
are coming or who pays them or who pays media, who pays uh, government uh, people. And, and I think curiosity is the only thing, the only thing, like one of the most important things that are going to save us mm -hmm. keeping or, or, or human alive, like that important, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I was, I was thinking about this, that when, when they tell us, here are the experts, who are the experts? Are we asking who are the experts? Are we researching their professional careers, uh, their conflicts of interest, how many years they have been in that position? Um, <clears throat> and why are we promoted, incentivized that we hear and believe the experts more than our neighbor, that our neighbor that is experiencing something, mm -hmm. that is feeling bad after uh, uh, an experimental thing. <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> and why don't we see that this conflict of interest is hiding something from us? Like, I think that's a very big question that we should all be asking. But, you know, I think why people, a lot of people are asking that question and like, and like you did, then really take on the reality of that, the truth of that, the enormity of what that is and what it means. And you have to grieve it. You have to go through the process of like, this is awful. This is terrible. This is painful. How can we get out of this? What can I do? You know, all of those feelings of hurt and deceit and, and deception and, and pain and shock and all of those things, you have to take those on. And in the same way that people don't like to travel is the same way people don't want to feel or they don't want to think or they don't even want to take on board the thought that something so evil could be happening right under our nose in our lifetime because as far as we're all concerned the majority of us on uh, who, who are living today unless we're like in really kind of um war-torn areas atrocities and and terrible evil things like that happened in history so these are things that we read about in books and then, you know, we have to question books, but a separate question. But, you know, these are things we read about in books. These are things that maybe if we're lucky enough to have uh, grandparents, they live through wars or, or famines or dictatorships or communism, and they can relay those stories to us and they can tell us what happened. And even they can even see the patterns you know, and see, even though maybe at their time they didn't notice when things start to change, but then there was a point where it was like, un you, it was undeniable that you were in a situation that was very bad. But the thing is, if you have your eyes open the first time, then it, w when you see certain things starting to change, you're like, hang on a minute, I, I've been here before. I saw how this went. I saw it when I was watching many people who were in um, Canada know at the time that they were doing all of the protests there and I was watching a lot of like vox pox from from people who were being interviewed there and many um there was one woman who'd come from from um eastern Europe and she'd arrived there like years before as a child in Canada and then she was there at the rally because then she had a child and she was like I saw this when I was young I, I ran, I came from my own country to escape that. And here I am now seeing the same thing coming again. I won't have it for my child. You know, they recognize the patterns. For most people, the, the thought of that is, it sounds too far away. No way would our government would never, never do anything like that. They're, they're, they're there to look after us. They're, you know, they're coming on television 24 seven, a million times a day telling us this is for, they want to help us. They want things to get back to normal. They want to keep us safe and protect us. And, 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 you know, they are the ones who know who the right people are to speak about these things. And anyone else who doesn't say anything in line with what they're saying is lying. And it plays into people's laziness because they don't want to look at anything and their fear, their fear that it might be true. <laughs> That's the biggest, you know, the, the more than anything is they're like, well, 
yeah the, but the people on the tv with the shiny kind of studios and the nice clothes what i'm going to believe them more than somebody who if i look into their history has worked in that industry for 20 30 40 years but they don't have a shiny studio they're on a zoom call you know and it doesn't look as shiny so we're like why should we believe that person and not the person who is on the television because that looks the present the presentation of it looks better but then over the past two and a half years it's become harder and harder for people to keep believing what they're being told unless they're really pushing against their inner core that is telling them it's not right it's not even if this was just something that happened for two weeks in 2020 we would have all forgotten about it by now we would have got, you know, maybe a few people would go, oh, you know that, you know, that wasn't what they said it was. And they'll be like, yeah, right. But there was no proof. But what has happened systematically over these two and a half years is that all the things that everyone was researching from the alternative and then trying to alert everyone to is starting to play out now. And yeah, they're still managing to kind of manage the damage that has been done but it's getting harder and harder to pretend that there's not a problem and that we're not going into some serious situations now worldwide, not just health-wise, but in terms of the currency and the way that the financial system is, is, is deliberately being destroyed. And it's like, how are we going to make sure that if a system comes in, that it works for us all and it doesn't imprison us and we're still in prison the future the future generation so that they never know any kind of freedom at all they don't have any choice in in what they do or they don't even they don't even understand what choice was you know they'll hear people of my age and <laughs> going yeah you know I remember when I could go to the shop and and pay with cash and get on a plane and go there these will be things and it sounds ridiculous for us to talk about it like this but we, when we're looking at the way things are going, we're talking about these things that if we're not careful, this is something that we'll talk about that future generations will never know. They'll never know what it's like to travel and see other countries. They'll never know what it's like to have coins and cash in their pocket. They'll never know what it's like to have health, you know, true health or be able to have true connection because the way that it is being set upon is to take those things away from them and it's hard to watch it happen because it's watching in slow motion and you know us as voices then oh uh, let's try and speak out let's try and communicate this in a way and also it takes a lot of strength I'm sure from you as well to be able to go right I'm going to say this <laughs> you know knowing the consequences of that and the pushback that you're going to get from people that you know I mean, what kind of reaction have you got in terms of speaking out more and more? Well, a lot, a lot. <laughs> like I lost um, contact and friendships and family that told me uh, like <laughs> not nice things. Um, because of, of my position mm -hmm. on all of this. And I feel like a duty, you know? I feel I do this and I speak up because I see what's going on. I see what's happening. And I see this loss of our liberties or the authorities wanting to, to take more power and, and take away our rights or privacy or uh, health or sovereignty. And I do it for my kids. Like I cannot imagine what it would be if I wouldn't speak up. Like I'm in a position to defend them. I'm the only one that can defend them. And I'm doing it also for my friends, for my family, even if they don't understand right now, even if they don't, see the point right now even if they think i might be crazy right now i don't care like i see the long run i see this is for the future of mankind i see that the little thing that i do it will have a repercussion because people like it or not the things we are speaking about are 
happening, even if people don't want to acknowledge them. And if the government or authorities say it's for our safety, it's just a facade. It's, it's just for us to be, ah, okay, don't worry, don't think about it, don't engage, don't research what they're actually doing, because it's, it's, it's a form to tell us they will take care of us. Mm. And we are the ones that we have to take care of us and in all fronts. And when some of my friends and family have not wanting to hear or research or look at information that I have posted or speak about, I think it's because it, it, it challenged the way they live and they don't want to deal to have to deal with it because if they if they actually heard me they will have to quit jobs they will have to quit lifestyle they will have to quit hearing all the media and obeying to the media and not thinking really like am i putting this experiment because i want to travel because i'm being coerced because or because I really think it's going to save me, it's going to protect me. Oh, but, oh, wait, I'm watching, it is not protecting anyone. I'm watching everyone is wearing, you know, something in the face and putting something in the arm and still are getting sick, 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 over and over. Like, mm -hmm. is it really helping? Is it really working? Or I'm going to not think about it, the evidence that is really here, that everybody is by now, two years, almost three years in, is the evidence outside. Right. Am I going to confront my inner identity or I'm going to be chill on Netflix? <laughs> That's the best way of putting it. Do you know, and I think what it is is that chilling Netflix and that <laughs> that whole um, it's a conveyor belt that will just draw you into uh, a false security and uh, um, there is no such thing as safety. Life isn't safe, but it doesn't mean that it isn't good. <laughs> you know, there's always dangers, there's always things to look around and there's always things to be aware of, but it's in that awareness of all of those things. It's in if there's a problem, going through the problem or trying to solve it instead of like just kind of looking at the problem and pointing at it and getting someone to come in and take care of your problems for you. That's how you learn and that's how you get stronger. I mean, I'm surprised that, um, you know, I, what, what really kind of ripped the, um, the veil back for me was just really seeing how how far away from spirit people were you know that's because and even whether they whether they were hardcore meditators or very religious or very spiritual or whatever it was when i started to really kind of notice where where the where the split was in terms of people who saw and people who didn't see it would be people that had some sort of self responsibility and some sort of connection and like I said it didn't have to be people that were out meditating day on day in day out but they just had a connection to themselves in terms of they trusted themselves more on a level than they trusted external forces and that you don't necessarily have to be like a, a, a guru spiritual prayer religious person to have that but it requires a certain level of self-responsibility to always kind of check in with yourself first before you get swayed by what's happening outside. Because especially at the beginning, there was more voices pushing, pushing against everyone who wasn't believing it or everyone was called anti, everyone was called conspiracy theory, you know, and it just, when you looked at it, it was, no one was really coming back and saying anything of any um value you know the the only way that they could push back was starting to just uh insult people call them names you're a conspiracy theory you're an anti-vaxxer you're a this you're a that you know and instead of 
instead of having a conversation, it was very rare where you would get someone who would say, well, why do you think that? They, they were not prepared to ask questions because they got so much in their, their fear that they couldn't even think straight. It kind of really pulled back where people were under the core of, of what they presented out to the world. And it really showed what people were operating from and also what responsibility they were prepared to take for themselves and then also maybe for their families because what surprised me more when I saw people that had children and really wouldn't you know question anything I don't have children so I'm speaking hypothetically but I would assume that if I even heard a tiny little rumor of something not being good for my child that I would be like okay let, let's just like chill before we go forward you know, this, these, these are the things now that we're going to have to be really dealing with and also kind of guiding people through and also guiding ourselves through is when the reality of what has been done really hits home for people. And it's starting to happen more and more now when they want, they realize what they've done for themselves, you know, to themselves, like say to travel, to stay in a job that they can't even work at now, <laughs> which is the irony of that, right? Or even worse still, they 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 did it to their children they did it to their babies and took innocent lives it's like what do you do with that and um just just like there are more and more and, and of course the mainstream are just kind of completely blanking it so you wouldn't know if you if you look there you just think there's n there's not a problem you know just you know there, there's another thing out there so get prepared to protect yourself from that next round of stuff i mean how are you um navigating this in terms of like seeing how things are, are slowly really becoming impossible to ignore now and knowing that people around you are going to go through some real hurt now well with uh, a lot of patience <laughs> patience I, I think and a lot of trust in god that he has a bigger plan for all of us and that everybody is playing a role. Everybody is it's playing a role for the awakening of mankind. And some of us choose to see things, to speak up, to fight, to promote freedom, health. But other people choose through pain or through sickness or through living um different um challenging experiences in their life mm -hmm. to get close to god and i respect that now like it took me a while like i for a while i tried to wake up the most the more <laughs> people that i could but i i i got to a that end like even if you tell them if you send them the the clinical trials the studies like the the real experts that are talking about it they wouldn't listen they wouldn't read even if you handle them the information mm -hmm. and i know that each of us has a, a soul that has a different path and we are extremely needed for the awakening of mankind so i honor everyone at their different stages i'm sure i'm not um like in the high levels or anything like that like i i don't i don't take um um how you say that um yeah well i i don't say that for myself like i don't even think that i'm where i'm at and I see what I see and I know what I know and that's it. I cannot be more or do more than what I have right now in myself. And I think self-responsibility is very important, at least for me, for my kids, and try to do not harm. Right. And even when when we judge somebody, when we think they are wrong we can be more compassionate too and and i try to practice that 
that even if I don't agree with you, that doesn't mean that I don't love you, that I don't that I that I don't appreciate you, that I don't hope the best for you, that you are healthy forever and that you just got a placebo. That's my biggest wish, <laughs> you know, and and that somehow there is something down the line that will make you think for yourself and that this spell that has most of uh, humanity under, it's broken somehow. Mm. That there's something that you say like, man, this is off. This is off. Like somehow this is off. And I, I don't get it. I don't believe it. And then that, that flame of curiosity or research of critical thing is ignite. And I wish that for everybody. And I wish it for myself too. Like every day, like I'm just trying, like, for example, take, take that, take out all the seed oils in my house. Mm. But some months ago, I just had them and, and I was cooking with them and I didn't know they were so harmful. And now that I know, I don't buy anymore. And, and it's in layers and I get it. And we cannot change from, uh, nine, night to morning in every aspect of our lives and it's gradual it's um it's a process and i and i'm grateful that i can see like i'm super grateful mm -hmm. and and that i can see what i see as far as i can see right now but i'm grateful to god and i trust god that somehow we're gonna be okay and It's hard to believe some days, yes. And you go like, oh my God, this is going <laughs> down very, very hard. Some days, yes. But most of the days I try to think like, he's here with us in whatever form we think of this love, this higher energy. There is a purpose for everything we're going through. And I'm just here to be a channel of what I feel is my truth, what I feel, it makes me feel more whole in unity with him. And that's it. Let's see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> that's perfect. And yeah, I'm, I'm with you on all of that as well. It's, it's a day, like you say, it's a daily process. It's, um, and through all of this, what I, what I just want to remind myself is that I want to be able in 10, 20, 30 years time to be sitting down and telling the story of what it was like to live through 2022 to 24, 25, however it's going to look, however this little blip of time is going to take. I want to be able to tell the story of I was there and what I tried to do and what it was like and You know, even even now, I wish I'd taken more pictures. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I wish I'd taken more pictures of, you know, the crazy signs in the supermarket and things like that, because no one would believe it. No one would believe that these things were happening unless you were there. But yeah, I hope that we get to tell this story as like a great, a great end to like, yes, you know what happened? You know, you want children to come to you and go, what was it like in 2020? <laughs> so that we can tell the story and tell it freely you know not tell it and, and think that we're going to get our money stopped <laughs> on the central bank. you know but thank you thank you for today um can you just tell people about your how to find your podcast and and what you're working on now as well and your social media and websites and everything that you have thank you carol yes i just want to uh close up your last idea that we you and i that are podcasters that we love what we do mm. with communication and with expressions we are the storytellers of our times like truly like we are a reflection of how the minds of people are right now and that's so of value for the future generations And I want to congratulate you for your podcast because it's amazing and I enjoy it so much. Mm -hmm. And this collaboration that that we do with, with some colleagues and podcasters, it's just, it's a remembrance 
of how important it is to hear each other mm -hmm. with no judgment. We just hear your point of view. Even if I don't agree with anything, with everything, it's fine. But everybody should be heard. Everybody should have a space to express themselves. And, and I think we should feel proud to be broadcasters on, on this year in history. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I, well, I thank you so much for, for having me. And people can reach to me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, like Almost every um, podcast platform, you can find me there. Uh, you can type travel to grow podcast and there I am. Okay. And also in social media, uh, I'm on Instagram and you, uh, my account is travel to grow podcast. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Carla, so much for being a guest on my podcast and thank you for listening. You can find out more about me on my website, which is carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. You can also find me on Facebook under that name, on Instagram under Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K, and a Telegram group, Her Conversations Tools for the Awakening. So as always, I'm wishing you the best of weeks and until the next episode, take care. Thank you. Bye.